Sure, having a mansion is a sign of wealth, and owning a private jet lets everyone know that you're rolling in the dough. But there's one thing that rises above all else when it comes to luxury, and that's owning your very own private island. Lounging in the sun with a drink in hand, miles away from the nearest person may sound like a dream, but it's a pricey one. Today, we're going to take a look at how much it actually costs and search for an answer to the big question, is owning a a private island actually worth it? The first big expense of buying a private island is, well, quite obviously, purchasing the island itself. Sure, you have fantasies about cabanas in the white sand, and maybe even a golf course on the north side of the island, but all that starts with finding the perfect location to build a foundation on and make those dreams a reality. That being said, the cost of your island varies drastically depending on where you buy. In Canada, for example, which has the highest number of private islands for sale in the world. You can get islands for under $200,000. And if you're really pinching pennies, well, you can even scoop up an island for just under $100,000. Take this island in Nova Scotia, called Half Island, for just $65,000, less than half the cost of your average home. You can buy this six-acre island that's located less than a mile away from the mainland. However, that price comes with a catch. Sure, $65,000 is great for your own little slice of paradise, in the summer at least. In winter, temperatures around Half Island can reach as low as negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The island is only feasible to live on during summer, and even during the summer, getting supplies can be a hassle. When you're thinking of a private island, chances are you're not thinking of cold, remote locations. You're thinking locations with sandy beaches and palm trees, where flip-flops are considered formal attire. Likely, you're picturing the Caribbean, made up of thousands of islands with hills, sprawling sand beaches and crystal clear waters. The Caribbean is a breathtaking location to build the tropical oasis of your dreams and there are plenty of islands to pick from. Surprisingly, the prices aren't actually that overwhelming either. If you're settling for a smaller chunk of land that's more remote, you can snag an island for between one and three million dollars. But if you're looking for a larger island in the more popular, desirable areas of the Caribbean, well, that price can be anywhere between 30 to 100 million dollars. Some of the popular island chains include the Exumus, the Abacus, Islands and the Berry Islands. Islands in these chains in particular offer an advantage that remote islands don't. They're close to bigger towns and cities, which eases access for visiting guests and owners. Take, for example, Spectabilis Island in the Exumus. The island stretches 460 acres, which includes dozens of white sand beaches, scenic hilltop views, and plenty of potential building space. And it's only 230 miles from my Miami, and a mere 60 miles from the capital. It's pricey, but it's easily accessible, and it comes with the added bonus of being able to say, yes, I have an island in the Exumus. Then, there are the more remote areas of the Caribbean, like Little Ragged Island, a 700-acre island that's listed for $35 million. Compared to Spectabilis, you get almost double the land for, well, half the price. And that's not all. Little Ragged Island has two ponds, meaning you have access to fresh water, and it has 30,000 feet of shoreline, which is equal to about 5.6 miles. And you're really Really, really have that 5.6 miles of shoreline to yourself, because the 110 mile long Ragged Island chain is incredibly underdeveloped, with only one small town that has a population of 72 people. In other words, you might as well not buy this island if you have any desire to hit up a local nightclub or dine at a fancy restaurant. Across all these price ranges and locations, the islands we've looked at all have something in common. They're underdeveloped developed at first. That may not seem like a big deal. If you have enough money to buy a private island, then surely building a house on said island shouldn't be an issue, right? Well, not really. Because when you buy a private island, you're not just paying for the land to build a house on. No, no, no. There's a lot more that goes into it. For starters, 
you have to find out if you even can build on the island. Places like the Caribbean have strict environmental laws on building because the ecosystem of the region is so fragile. There, an environmental impact study is required before you make any changes to the island you've bought. And that environmental impact study doesn't come cheap. It'll cost you at least $50,000. These environmental laws are also common in Canada, where endangered animals may call the lake and ocean islands home. I mean, after all, you wouldn't want to evict cute little critters like this, would you? Oh, look at them go. In Ontario, specifically, you're only allowed to build if there is more than an acre of buildable land on the island. Meaning, scooping up a super small island for the cost of your monthly paycheck isn't actually worth it, unless you feel like camping. On top of the expensive environmental study that takes place before you build, there are dozens of environmental protection laws that will increase the price of your build. Things like how you gather water, how you generate electricity, and how you access the island are greatly regulated in order to protect the beautiful lakes and oceans. So, keep in mind how much that will run the bill up in addition to the standard cost of building a home. But all environmental stuff aside, there are lots of other logistics to figure out. Firstly, shipping building supplies to the island, which doesn't come cheap. Along with the building supplies, you'll need to get heavyweight building equipment on the island, which requires specific boats. And once you've dropped thousands and thousands of dollars to get the supplies to your doorstep, you need to have skilled contractors, plumbers, and electricians on the island daily. And if your island is miles and miles away from the nearest town with hotels, like Little Ragged Island is in the Caribbean, then you're looking at some massive costs just to get your building crew on site. Plus, you have to actually build a way for your preferred mode of transportation to reach the island. If you want to access the island fast, well, you can build an airstrip, but most estimates put the cost of that somewhere upwards of one million dollars. I mean, a helipad is a cheaper option, or you could go with a dock for boats and seaplane access, but these are still going to cost you a pretty penny. That being said, it's a lot easier to buy a developed island rather than an undeveloped one. Take Frozen K, located in the Berry Island chain of the Bahamas. The 40-acre island costs $17 million and is readily accessible by both boat and seaplane. It features white powder beaches, lush forests, and a six-bedroom, six-bathroom residence that measures a whopping 4,145 square feet. Oh, and there's also a heated swimming pool, of course. In addition, there is an 806 square foot manager's cottage and a 1,534 foot staff cottage, as well as a marina that accommodates up to 100 foot long yachts. However, Frozen K brings up yet another cost associated with private islands, and that's maintenance. If you have enough money for a private island, chances are you're pretty busy busy with work and won't be able to spend all your time sipping pina coladas with your feet in the sand. Leaving the home unoccupied puts you at risk of squatters, break-ins, and other damage, so having the island occupied and taken care of is a necessity. Though I've spent much of the video talking about the costs associated with having your own private island, there's also a potential to make money when you're not occupying your home. Private island rentals are wildly popular for the wealthy, including myself. Islands like Shwani K in the Bahamas have a minimum cost of $14,000 per day, but that's just for double occupancy. Each additional person costs $500 per day, so bringing just four more people will cost you $16,000 per day at a minimum, not including gratuity. In other words, if you own that island, you can make some darn good money. If Shwani K is rented out just as a double occupancy, occupancy at the lowest rate for every day of the year, the property will bring in at least $5 million. There is that wonderful benefit of additional income that comes with owning a private island, but it'd be wrong of me not to mention the other benefits, which is simply owning a slice of paradise. Having your own escape miles and miles away from the nearest person is a joy like no other. Waking up and walking down to the beach that is yours, sipping wine on the deck that is yours, overlooking the ocean in your underwear if you want, because, well, it's your island. <laughs> you make the rules. There's all sorts of reasons that people dream of owning private islands. That being said, 
It's time to answer the big question. Is owning a private island worth it? Well, I suppose that's up to you to decide. Are the insane costs, time-consuming regulations, and painstaking transportation of building supplies and amenities worth lounging on an island you can call home? What do you think? And if you had your own private island, what would you name it? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. Pip-pip. Doodly do.